France and Australia, folks, this weekend, Rugby World Cup warm-up games. Pretty much like the last Rugby World Cup warm-up game before the big tournament kicks off in a couple of weeks' time. The hosts taking on, I guess, a kind of under-pressure Eddie Jones' Wallabies, although it's kind of a, uh, a young side. We'll go through the squad, some stats, predictions, recent history, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. France, fourth in the world at the moment, having dropped a couple of spots. The Wallabies... Um, yeah, I mean, Eddie Jones is kind of already writing this one off, to be honest. Not writing it off, but he's saying it's all about the World Cup. We're going to be judged on the World Cup. So kind of read into that what you will. Um, interestingly, though, the Wallabies have a decent record against France, man. These two sides don't tend to have lopsided results in recent times. Um, like, usually it's two points or three. Uh, Dave Rennie's Wallabies at the end of last year only lost by a point. They were unlucky not to get an away win in France, 30 points to 29. Then there was that uh, French tour of Australia back in 2021 where admittedly France took a kind of experimental side through and they lost that series 2-1, although the, the results were all very close games. Um, so yeah, this one I think is predicted to be a little bit more of a blowout considering where the two sides have gone since that last result. But uh, yeah, hopefully it's an interesting one. For France, they have made a bunch of changes from the team that played Fiji last week, and a number of their kind of big gun guys are back. Uh, Jean-Baptiste Glot uh, is promoted from the bench to get a start at loose head. Marchand is back into the 23 and starts. Antonio is the only front rower con to continue with the same jersey number on his back. They will be looking to get dominance up front. Um, I think, though... It'll be more interesting once the front row replacements come on as to where the kind of two scrums are at. Uh, Flamont and Willemsa is the second row. I like that second row for France. Big unit, Willemsa continues on. And then the skills man, Flamont. Whether you put Flamont there, whether you put Woki there, or whether you put uh, Telfa Fanua in for Willemsa, I kind of like the the dynamic of the big, brutal guy and the, the skills guy. So, uh, yeah, what can I say? I, I like that. French type 5 overall. Uh, Kors, Olivon, and Aldrit are the back row. So Olivon comes in at number 7. He had a pretty bloody good game a fortnight ago. And speaking of kind of skills guys who can run a great support line, throw a great offload, Olivon is going to be doing all that. And Aldrit um, is going to do his ball carrying high work rate thing all day long. You know exactly what you're going to get out of him. And then Kloss also will be looking to put in pro probably, potentially the most tackles of the back row, depending on how the minutes are distributed. Uh, Dupont, captain is the side. He's back at nine. Um, it's always going to be an upgrade when you can bring Antoine Dupont into the 23. Uh, they rested him last week against Fiji. He'll be looking to get that last bit of match sharpness and kind of continue to build that chemistry with Jalibert, who is promoted from the bench to start at number 10 ahead of Astoy, who is not in the 23 this week. Jelly Bear uh, came on, I think, with about 20 minutes to go last week. But, I mean, Jelly Bear and uh, Dupont don't play for the same club. So they don't quite have that same chemistry that Dupont has with the now injured Intermac. So a lot of pressure goes on that combination. Uh, so the little bit of extra game time these two guys can get together, I think, will be beneficial. Dante and Fiku seems to be the preferred midfield combo for the French. And that is the combo that is going to be on field this week against Australia, Dante was a defensive powerhouse against Fiji. Tackles and turnovers, less so much with his ball carries. And uh, Fiku replaces Vincent at 13. You know that guy's going to be everywhere. He is probably one of the smartest rugby players, I think, in the game at the moment. And two new wings in Villiers and Penault. Those guys have kind of terrorized the Six Nations for a wee while with um, with their big carries. And over, like Villiers is such a powerhouse for such a small guy. And uh, Peno deceptively quick. Ramos is also there at fullback. He will be doing the goal kicking and looking to be contributing on attack as well. Uh, Movaka, Telfa Fanua, that's Sebastian, and Aldegheri are the front row replacements. So Telfa Fanua is the only guy in the 23 who's not in the French Rugby World Cup squad. Uh, with the injury to Cyril Bai, that kind of makes a bit of sense as he is in the squad but not currently in the... World Cup squad, but not currently fit to play. Roman Telfafanua and Cameron Wilkie, two locks on the bench, and then Boudon is your kind of loose forward replacement. And then uh, just the two backs in Kuyu and Jamine. So Jamine drops to the bench, but Kuyu, Boudon, Wilkie, Telfafanua, Aldegheri, all these guys didn't play last week. So yeah, keeping it pretty fresh for the French. Uh, for the Aussies, 
They haven't played for a few weeks since they were over here in New Zealand, but they've they've kept things stable in some departments and got a few new guys in the squad as well. Angus Bell, Dave Parecki, and Talia Tupo are the front row. Uh, I think they'll be fine. I'm a little bit worried about the the bench front rowers, to be honest. I mean, you've got Matt Fassler, Blake Scoop, and uh, Zane Nongor. Nongor was under the pump against the All Blacks when he came on, and then Blake Scoop will be in his first ever test match. So a big pressure on the young man. Um, Fassler has done all right when he's come on, to be fair. But yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of minutes Bell and Tupo get. But in terms of around-the-park props, those are two of the most devastating ball-carrying props you will see in any team. So um, it's more about the judgment on how they go at set-piece. But around-the-park, these guys are going to be fine. Also, how fit is Taniela Tupo will be a question mark because he's not played a lot of rugby this year and he, he goes down injured a lot. So, knock on wood that that guy can remain fit. Richie Arnold and Will Skelton is a big, big second row. Uh, French fans will be familiar with both of those guys playing their trade in France. Uh, but yeah, Will Skelton's captain, so he may be expected to go 80 minutes. Tom Hooper, Fraser McCright, and Rob Bellatini is kind of a less experienced back row. Obviously, there's no Michael Hooper in this Wallabies World Cup squad, but McCright has been the Form 7 in Aussie Rugby, so we look to see him doing his tackling thing. And uh, he's not a bad ball carrier as well. Got a bit of wheels about him. Tom Hooper has uh, kind of emerged from being out of his depth in his first test about a month or so ago to being a bit of a tackling machine himself. And he's a proper line option as well with that bit of extra height he brings. And Valentini hasn't maybe been as devastating on attack as we know he can be, but he's been defensively really sound. So it'd be nice to see him just getting a few carries off the back of the scrum. Um, kind of emulating what we see from Aldry, to be fair, but those are big shoes to fill. Uh, Tate McDermott, Carter Gordon, that's your 19 combo, which seems to be the preferred one at the moment. Uh, there's no Nick White in the 23 this week, so it's probably going to be more of a running game from the Aussies. Uh, Fochetti and Pitaya is your 12-13 combo. I think uh, Karevi's still got a wee bit of an injury, so recovering. Um, but yeah, so it's not the kind of... I don't know, like I always liked the Aussie midfield when it was, uh, when it was Karevi... And um, Ikitao. But uh, yeah, not to be with Karevi injured at the moment, coming back, and then uh, Ikitao not in the squad, also recovering from a shoulder injury. So yeah, it's a different midfield. And then now we need to watch Vunivalo on the wings. Vunivalo's return to the squad has been a bit of a controversial one. His pick for the World Cup squad, to be fair, was a bit controversial. He was exposed against South Africa, made some pretty calamitous errors, but he's good in the air. So we'll see how he goes. No one needs to watch has been class and Callaway also class. Very safe and very dangerous on attack. Um, I mentioned the front row replacements. You've got Matt Phillip in the second row replacement. Laura Robliot is your kind of lock loose forward replacement. And then Longy Gleason is another loose forward replacement. So just the two backs. And finds Lelawasa, who will be getting his first cap. So congrats to him. He's a live wire. And then Ben Donaldson, who's going to cover essentially 10 and 15 um pretty inexperienced as well only a couple of caps for him stats wise both these sides play kind of a low possession game um, not always by choice especially uh with the aussies in recent times but they both have very effective carries like both sides are very good at getting some meterage from limited numbers of carries uh the aussie goal kicking though is nowhere near the french goal kicking uh the french are in the 80s almost 90s like 88 percent i think across this year Whereas the Aussies are still in the 60s, which could be a difference. Um, both sides playing with really big forward packs now, actually. We don't necessarily associate the Australians with having a really big pack, but the likes of having a Skelton there, an Arnold there, a Tupo, those are some really big bodies. Tom Hooper's a big guy as well. So, um, yeah, they'll be looking not to get bullied off the park. They may be a little bit less mobile, but a bit bulkier. Um, one of the key differences, though, is like France don't concede many clean breaks. It's very rare. I think the Fijians only managed one, and that's a, a side chock full of talent. Um, yeah, the, the French defense is very rarely kind of catastrophically broken, whereas the, the three clean breaks conceded a game, whereas the Aussies are at about eight. So, uh, yeah, Eddie's defensive pattern still finding some shape, what can I say? And also the Aussies have tended to have a really poor final 20 minutes. They've conceded an average of 13 points in their games in the final 20 this year. So they need to get that kind of extra bit of fitness in their game, I guess, to make those tackles in the final 20. Um, and yeah, a little bit too much drop ball. 
But it's a young side, so we'll see if they can click as we get closer to the World Cup. Uh, I mentioned the recent history is pretty close. Average score is 27-26 to Australia. But the predictions are going nowhere near that close. Predictions are saying France by 13 with the bookies. France by 16 with the rugby forecast algorithm. It is on from the Stade de France in Paris. It is a uh, yeah 5.45 local kickoff time in France, which is kind of early for France, which kind of stinks because that's like 3.45 in the morning for those of us here in New Zealand and probably, I guess, like midnight for you guys in Australia, close to one in the morning. So kind of interesting timing. Luke Pierce is the ref for this one fingers crossed he has a good game fingers crossed no more major names go down injured fingers crossed no red cards but um yeah you guys let us know your thoughts one last shake one last throw of the dice for these two sides before the world cup proper hopefully it is a good game you guys let us know your thoughts and um yeah i'll talk to you guys again soon together